Okay, we're gonna do a disassembly. Um, <laughs> this is not. This is not gonna be fun. Of course. Ha 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 ha. Bostro 360. Well, I'm stupid. All right. Let's tear into this Dell Vostro 360 all in one and see what we can see. There are four screws, four very obvious screws. Oh, come on. Four very obvious screws that are also a pain to get out. Come on, come on, let's get in here. There you go. You know, sometimes you just have to talk to the screws. <clears throat> they are quite tight from the factory, to be honest. Now, this is a little different looking from several of the other all-in-ones I've serviced. Uh, most of the all-in-ones I have serviced either start coming apart from this stand area, um, or you have to take out stuff like screws in the feet or around the edges um, and then you can start prying at them. This one has four screws along here and doesn't appear to have any screws in the general area of the stand. Man, I wish I had a longer Phillips screwdriver. This is a number two, but it's way not long enough for me. Uh, now, Ah, uh, okay. So, once those screws are out, I guess you can start prying. Though that's no guarantee anything's actually going to come up. It's got to come on over here. There's two more screws here. Great, there's screws beside the feet. That I did not see when I first looked it over. But they're literally right beside the feet. And they're clearly holding this back cover on. So that's actually six screws, not four. Great. Alright. At least they're the same kind. There's one here. Oh, God. Okay. Yep. Six screws. Zero shame. And there it is. That's it. Look at that. That was easy. That was so easy. If only more of these all-in-ones were built in this way. Now, that could be a little dirty in there. Actually, I wonder if there's dust in there. I probably won't find out that easy. So what we're doing on this one is a solid state drive upgrade. On all-in-ones, solid state drive upgrades tend to be a real problem. So here, hard drive, man, that is tight. Oh no, I can't get it out. Why is that so darn tight? Maybe a number one will torque it a little better. Yeah, I had to use a number one The general rule is use the biggest screwdriver you can, but in this case, a number two Phillips, which fit, uh, was just chewing up the head. All right, look at this big chunky. Uh, oh, look, it's a unified cable end. That's kind of cool, I guess. This is an old Windows 7 machine. So anyway, you have this big, bulky hard drive here. And it's held in with these enormous, enormous, flat, long screws. Again, the number two fits, but the number one is probably going to torque it a little better. It's very strange to me that this is the case. Come on, get out of there. Yeah. So, strictly speaking, with this machine, I actually could just throw the solid state in and tape it down but something that i consider to be very important is the possibility that in the distant future someone else will want to put a normal hard drive in this machine again it's very unlikely but 
<sighs> you buy enough computers off of eBay that some idiot has, quote, pulled the hard drives from for privacy instead of wiping them and reselling them like a responsible person who knows that hard drives can't store data beyond a zero fill. Um, but they yank the hard drives and they yank the caddy, and then you don't have this piece of metal that is required to put a drive back in. So, this caddy, let's see, we need to get an SSD. So one of the challenges is going to be we need to mount a two and a half inch drive that, uh, here's an example drive. We need to mount a two and a half inch drive in this three and a half inch bay in such a way that it can all go back together. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. We take this, we mount the drive in here somehow, maybe with tape even, um, because these holes don't line up with the brackets that you usually can get for SSDs. Most SSD mount brackets, they come up to the middle hole area for the drive, but the problem is that there's no middle hole on this. It's just got that tab. So you can't use a normal bracket that has a middle hole for a desktop. So I may end up just making the SSD float freely inside of here so as to preserve it, to preserve its integrity. Um, provisions for flipping this over. Uh, it might be able to be put in upside down actually, though I'm not sure about that. Uh, we shall see, we shall see. Here I am, on the road again. Can't say more, or get a copyright complaint. So, we have this drive. Ideally, we would like to take this drive and mount it this way, rather than this way. So that it can be mounted on this thing, here. So let's see what we can do. First of all, you need what they call a fine thread desktop screw. It comes off of uh, desktop CD drives, desktop floppy drives. You can steal this from almost any old desktop computer. I don't know if I can get the camera to focus that close, but uh, come on camera. Can you do it? Can you, can you focus this close camera? You kinda can. It's a fine thread screw as opposed to a coarse thread screw. So. That's what laptop style drives take. Now, is the grid pattern on this such that we can just mount it straight? Ah, look at that. There's a lump. You actually kind of need to move it past that lump. So what can we do? If we get that one lined up with a hole, uh, it looks like they are off. They are off just enough to be a problem. That is... That is so typical. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to undergo this horrifically delicate operation to try and get one screw into a hole somewhere. Somewhere. Probably this one right here. The second one. All right. Screw it down, but not all the way. Most of the way, but not all the way. And then we're going to swing the drive and see if we can get one of the other screw holes to match up at all. Even if it's just close. And it looks like we may be able to do that. Uh, this one may actually fit. Now, we might have to go at it at an angle, but it looks like, yep, sure enough. Sure enough, we can make it work with these two. So, there we go. There we go. Gently tighten it. Now look. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Natively mounted. Just had to flip the cable. Now, there is one more thing that kind of needs to be done. And that is, this is going to look a little weird, but get some packing tape here. Alright, 
these four screws these four screws need to remain available so I'm going to just kinda find somewhere to put them I may not be able to put them through these holes actually it looks like the shafts are too big so uh, let's see let's go with maybe the next available option which is to put them down there in the middle and I think that's what I'm going to do I'll just put them down here in the middle huddle them all here in the center and piece of tape over them in the middle here tape it down on all sides as much as possible that tape isn't going anywhere if someone ever needs to put a normal hard drive back into this machine including me it will be possible sorry about that I have the windows open so you'll hear road noise all right, you have to worm the cables a little bit to keep them from getting squished, but there it is. And now we just take this, put the screw back. You, you know how this goes. Reassembly is the opposite of disassembly. One screw here, and you're good to go here. I am kind of curious about this, but I really don't feel like tearing all this apart. Um... Here's what I'm going to do. To see if there is a clog while I have this open, I will pull the flashlight up on my phone, and I will put it up to these bars, and I will look to see if I can see through. And there is some dust in there, but nowhere near enough to clog it up. So I'm not going to worry about that. It occurs to me you might be able to do the reverse that way. but simple cell phone flashlight to see if there's dust it's not clogged I'm not worrying about it okay SSD physically installed let's put her back together uh, real quick by the way before I do that actually you see these metal this metal thing over here this is an access door that's how you get to the RAM there's two memory sticks over here um, if you need to do a RAM upgrade, you just pull this door up. It's just held in with sp springy metal. It, it's not anything special. It just pushes right back down. Really hard, right? Um, CPU's right here. If you need to get to do the heat sink paste, you'll have to take this cover off, but the screws are fairly obvious. Um, the stand may have to come off. There's screws here for the stand. But once you're in frankly this thing is really obvious as to just how you get it apart so I'm not too worried about showing you the rest especially since that's not my job today my job is to upgrade this to a solid-state drive and Windows 10 erase the old hard drive and dispose of it that's it uh, anything beyond that is beyond my job description so make sure all the little clicky clippy things around the edges go down and then go through the painstaking process and uh, the number one seem to work better on these two go through the painstaking process of putting all six of these stinking screws back in the bottom but hey you know what at least you don't have to do any prying with pry tools to get this open. I like computers built like this. I'm so tired of everything having plastic clip construction. And what really kills me is how things have plastic clip construction at the same time that they have a bunch of screws holding them together. Like, how much structural integrity do you need at this point, guys? Really? Plastic clips. God almighty. Everything has plastic clips. And they're always a pain to get loose. I miss the day when you could pop a few screws and you're done. Like, you have uh, some of these computers that have the unibody style construction. Ah, there's a customer here. That's my uh, customer alarm. Alright, well, that's it. Y'all can figure out the rest yourself, I'm sure. Take care.